Hi mamas, welcome to another edition of Mental Health Mondays with Reset. So I'm Carrie with Reset Brain and Body here to talk a little bit more about gaslighting. So you guys thought that this was such a great topic last week talking about narcissists and gaslighting. And so I wanna take it a little bit further. So first of all, I wanna just back up and explain that narcissists typically are not intentionally manipulative or malicious. So let that sink in. Narcissists are not intentionally malicious or manipulative. Our demographic of who we see for therapists is not a lot of narcissists. And why is that? When narcissists tend to cause most of the issues, it's because they lack self-awareness. Narcissists do not have the ability to really look internally and examine themselves objectively. This is a lot of times a trauma response. A lot of narcissists had a traumatic childhood or a traumatic experience in which they had to disconnect from reality in order to cope with the trauma that was going on. And so in doing so, they kind of made up their own reality in their head. So that, on top of a lack of self-awareness creates then a lot of their behaviors, one of those being gaslighting. So when you think about the narcissist in your life, a lot of times it feels super personal, like they're doing something intentionally to hurt you, to harm you, but it is a trauma response that creates their need for continual validation, control, and a lot of times what ends up becoming that codependent relationship. And so ideally they would have gotten treatment, had therapy years ago, years, years, years ago when the trauma was first occurring. But instead they developed a coping mechanism, again, to alter their reality, alter their perception of themselves and the world as a self-defense mechanism, as a survival tactic. And in doing so, they had a skewed understanding of the world, which then gets put on everyone else around them. Thus how and why they end up gaslighting. So the blaming is a huge thing with narcissists and gaslighting, right? It's everyone else's fault and they are the victim because the thing is, is that early on, if they were experiencing trauma and they were unable to change it or cope effectively, they then were struggling with what to do and how to manage it. And so it was really important for them to be able to step away from it, aside from it, without having to take accountability because it felt like it was too big, too uncontrollable for them. And so a lot of times then that means that again, they had this altered, the skewed version of reality that allowed them to continue that victimhood because it felt so big, so out of control. And so that just continues to build and build and build throughout the years in which then they look at the whole world as themselves as a victim and everyone else is to blame for their problems because a long time ago when the trauma was first occurring, they felt so helpless that if someone told them, you know, take control of your life, take accountability, make a change, and yet they were a seven-year-old or a 12-year-old or a 20-year-old scared and really just trying to survive in a maybe a really dysfunctional, chaotic household, that would have felt really belittling. That would have felt really hard. So it's important to look at the narcissist in your life with a little bit of compassion and understand, well, what, where did they come from? What kind of childhood? Because narcissists just don't happen overnight. Much of like most mental health <laughs> issues, it's a remnant of intergenerational trauma. So typically mom or dad also had stuff that they had a hard time working through. There was a history of abuse. There was a history of substance abuse in the family for years and years and years, generations. So this is really important to look at those narcissists in your life with a little bit more compassion. But narcissists, again, they lack that self-awareness. They do not come to therapy. Most of them do not. Or if they do, it's everyone else is doing everything wrong. They have a really hard taking blame, time taking self-blame or accountability. It's really frustrating. <laughs> so if you're interacting with someone who is a narcissist, you might notice, again, that um, lying, exaggerating them, you know, sharing their version of the truth but not seeing your own version um, de-invalidating, 
again, it timed out. I'm so sorry. <laughs> they will continually repeat in your head that you are wrong or um, your opinion is incorrect. You had a different understanding of events. You misunderstood things. So continual ways in which to repeat, to invalidate you and to make you question your own story, your own beliefs, your own worth. Um, they also will give you a lot of false hope. So because they really do need love and compassion and connection and validation, they'll recognize when someone is pulling away and they'll, they'll bring you back in, right? They will go over the top. This is kind of that grandiosity. They will go over the top to show you love and affection and give you gifts and give you attention. And, you know, they'll be the person that all of a sudden shows up at your front door with a really elaborate gift to say I'm sorry and it, they kind of create this cycle of abuse right so they question they make you question your own self-worth but at the same time can come back and redeem themselves or so they think that they're redeeming themselves and again it's not intentionally malicious it's not intentionally manipulative they truly just do not have the self-awareness but they just know I don't want to be alone I don't want you know someone to leave me or I don't want to be abandoned and so they will loop you back in they'll pull you back in so this creates that codependent relationship that we talked about last week and it's really important to recognize in yourself when you might be in this relationship when you might be in this toxic type of relationship where someone makes you question your own opinion your thoughts your reality because again narcissists are there to alter reality to create a different perception of reality and again that's for their own protection their own survival instinct and so they bring other people into that skewed version of reality and so that means that then your own perspective your thoughts you start to question like well wait a second if it doesn't match their reality it must be wrong and that is how they get you in their world and again it's not like they're sitting back saying okay i'm gonna make up these facts i'm gonna lie about this so that then i can get them to stay close to me no it doesn't work that way they truly do believe in their own version of events they truly do so if you are in this relationship or you're witnessing it just recognize again that you got to hold your ground you got to have those boundaries you have to be super grounded in your own intuition and your own trust in yourself and that is one of the things that someone is recovering from a codependent relationship a relationship with a narcissist has to work on is building that trust and security in themselves first and foremost building up their own confidence so then you can start to see reality you can start to see it as not the narcissist reality and as your own and believe in it to then make decisions for yourself going forward. So I know we had some internet connections today. I'm sorry, maybe it's only on my end. We will continue to talk about this if it's of interest to you. Please do drop comments, questions, anything you need. Again, apologies, technology is just one of those things. <laughs> so I thank you. Uh, we'll pick back up again after Christmas. We're going to talk about um, staying body positive. But again, in the new year, if you want us to circle back around to this topic, we will. Thank you so much for watching. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays for those of you that celebrate.